and you know, if you want to have me back on the show to talk more about this, I'd be happy to join, to prohibit companies from selling and trading our cell phone location information, which unfortunately is happening all across the country right now and is a totally unregulated wild west that exposes all of us to very, very serious privacy and even personal safety harms every day. So I'm really, I'm really confident that you know, lawmakers are are taking this stuff really seriously and that we're going to get some some pretty significant work done this session. Well, we'll put you on the books for the next time up. I appreciate your time and your expertise on this. Kate Crawford from the Massachusetts ACLU, thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, after a decade of explosive growth, it looks like the tech sector is seeing a major shift. The layoffs, they just keep coming and coming. At companies like Google and Meta, that's Facebook's parent company, Amazon, Microsoft, with tens of thousands of people losing their jobs in just the past few weeks. And since the start of last year, the tech industry has shed a staggering 200,000 jobs. And all of this comes, of course, as top financial leaders continue to warn a recession may be right around the corner. So what does this all mean for the future of the tech industry? And if you're one of the unlucky ones now out of work, what can you do to get back up on your feet? To discuss this, I'm joined now by Michelle Singletary. She's a personal finance columnist with The Washington Post and Dan Primack. He's a business editor at Axios. Welcome to both of you. Dan, I want to start with you. We talk a lot about layoffs and what they mean in the greater economy. Um, and these are big numbers. 200,000 is a large number. But we're not seeing layoffs in other parts, sectors of the business industry. Are we or is this an anomaly? Uh, it's an anomaly. We're seeing some on Wall Street, but in general, it is an anomaly. And it's really because the tech sector, particularly kind of beginning uh, a little bit before the pandemic and then through and after, hired faster than other industries did and hired more in part because stock prices kept rising to astronomical levels. Revenue kept going up to astronomical levels. So what you're really seeing is a pullback from something that already was abnormal. And as you said, overall, if you look at the overall American labor market, it is almost historically tight. Now, the, the layoffs are up uh, around a bunch of different types of companies. I know we call them tech companies, but they all have different models, <clears throat> excuse me, and they drive in different ways. Um, is, are these layoffs in anti anticipation that they think there may be a recession, so they want to tighten now? Are they because there's advertising issues that advertisers are holding back, so maybe the tech industry is holding back as well? Or is this, do you think, just a complete adjustment? Or D, all of the above. <laughs> I think it's all of the above. I think it depends on the company. Certainly companies like Facebook or Meta and Google, there's an advertising uh, piece to this. Certainly the ad market has slowed down in part because advertisers, if they're not necessarily that they believe there will be a recession or not, but they're concerned they could be. So they're tightening their belts a bit. Advertising budgets are one of the first things to get shrunk a little bit. Uh, that, that's the main piece. Like the, And obviously stock prices have gone way down. There's some revenue things. It's caution more than anything else. You're not seeing generally any of these tech giants, even even though the numbers are huge, they're still usually 7%, 8%, 10% of their workforces. It's not, you know, 50, 60, 70%. So, Michelle, a lot of folks who are being, it's across the board, I've talked to people in all sorts of generations that have been unfortunately impacted by these layoffs, but a lot of people being laid off, these are their first jobs or they're young adults or they have moved someplace in order to, to work at these companies uh, and expected, I, I, as we all do, to be working there for a long time. And, you know, your first layoff, you never forget. I think the first time I was yeah. fired, I remember that very clearly as well. What advice do you have for people who are experiencing this layoff experience right now? I think the first thing is that you should give your uh, self permission to mourn. Um, we often go to right to the money um, tips, but it is, as you already said, it is, can be pretty devastating. And even more so when you work for those type of companies, which were seen as you get a job with that, you've made it. And so when people get laid off from those big name companies, Microsoft, Google, it really hits your spirit. Because you, it was a very probably got that job through a very competitive process, and so right away you're thinking, what did I do? How did I? Was it something about my job performance? And before you can even take the steps that you need to secure yourself financially, you got to deal with that mental part of it. And so while you still have insurance with the company, or you still have some access to health care, um, you know the employee assistance um, program at your job. 
take advantage of that because it could hit you um, at a level that would make it difficult for you to find another job. And then once you deal with that, the next thing is to take assessment of your budget. What can you cut quickly? Oftentimes people overestimate how long it would take for them to replace that job. And so you don't cut right away because you think, you know, I'm going to get something soon. And that money could be then used to help pay the things that you absolutely have to pay for the roof over your head and the food on your table. Michelle, I want to stay with, <laughs> with the, the emotional part of it there as well, because a lot of these jobs also came with a lot of frills, uh, a lot of, um, you know, free food, free donuts, a lot of work where you want or how you want to work. So there was a feeling of uh, a, a bubble that is wrapped around, some, not all, obviously, but some tech employees. And also, as I saw on Twitter, as people were being laid off, they were talking about how they had just gotten a really great job review, right? They had a performance review yeah. two months ago, and they were told they were key, and they were the future of the company, and then they get laid off. So, um, you yeah. know, stay a little bit more with that. What if, if this is the first time you've been through this, is it okay to jump to jaded? <laughs> or, you know, do you want to just try and find a way to keep that joy of why you chose this, this industry in the first place? I think it's both. I think you do have to address this sense of failure. Um, I saw a tweet from someone who they got uh, laid off about a year. I mean, they were about to celebrate their first anniversary at one of the major companies. Um, and that must be just, you know, devastating. Um, and so, you know what, feel what you feel. I mean, we always tell people, oh, you know, joy will come in the morning. And we kind of like try to um, get people to go to that joy stick right away. But that it's not good advice. You know, when you have, it's like, I don't want to equate it to this because it seems so strong, but when someone passes away or something major like that, you've got to give yourself that space to feel that. Um, and no matter how, what, you could have gotten a great evaluation. It's hard for you to go, what did I do? Particularly in a situation where there's so many people who didn't get laid off. So these companies, and I'll tell you, I hate when they do this. Oh, it's only 1% of our workforce. It's only 5% of our workforce. But when you talk about math, that's still, you know, thousands of people. And then there's survivor grief from the people who didn't get laid off. And so, you know what? I'm, I'm a big believer of just, I mean, I, I see a therapist for all kinds of stuff that happened in my background. But, you know, just see someone that can help you get through this. Uh, because you're going to need that mental bandwidth to then search for another job. And if you're still grieving, you're still angry, you haven't processed that, that could impact your ability um, to get new employment. And we should mention, too, it's, you know, the tech sector and the media sector also seeing uh, layoffs, not to the degree that the tech cent center is, but both of our other companies, uh, Michelle, have, have, I'm at NBC, mm -hmm. we've seen layoffs and coworkers been let go over the past couple of weeks as well. Dan, so what, what happens now, right? It, is, it, is it almost like this is the reshuffling moment and the resetting moment? Social media is not new anymore. These tech companies are not babies anymore. They are now getting into the established legacy area of, of this, um, this sector. Um, I'm old enough to have gone through the tech bubble the first time when it burst. Um, but it reset, and, you know, here we are off at the races again. Twitter is killing me. You know, I'm just mourning and grieving Twitter every day that it's not what it was for me. But I'm also aware of the human cost to that, that there are people who really invested and believed in and um, programmers who were writing code that were so thrilled in applications, and that's all gone for them as well. But can we expect maybe a year from now it will be leaner, but the tech industry will be back on its feet? Because we're certainly all using it. Uh, yeah, and, and as you said at the beginning of this, I mean, tech is a complicated word right now, right? Because what company isn't a tech company in a certain sense? And to be honest, all companies now say they're tech companies. I think what's important, particularly for folks who have been laid off from, a, you know, whether that be a meta or an Amazon or whatever, the, the real job opportunities right now are tech jobs at non-tech companies, or at least companies you wouldn't think of as tech companies. And you have a lot of industrial companies, manufacturers, et cetera, who have been, who are looking right now and saying, wait, we can get the, a former Google engineer? That's a really big deal for them. And they really want those people. So there are jobs available. Again, as I said at the top, this is an extremely tight labor market. Unlike sometimes in the past when we have seen 
you know, massive layoff waves, it's been everywhere. And you have incredibly long unemployment lines and people can't find a job anywhere. Right now, there are jobs even for coders and, the, and these tech workers. They just might not be in the traditional places. And the final thing I'd say is this is also usually the time when we see a bit of a tech startup boom because somebody who's maybe had a good idea or wanted to go out on their own, well, there's no better time than when you're not getting a paycheck anyway. You know, Michelle, I also want to talk a little bit about preparing yourself for what inevitably the future of getting laid off or getting fired and get your advice on this. I had some family members come visit me at my other job and my niece looked at my desk and said, you don't have any personal items on your desk? And I said, no, because it makes it easier when I go, if I have to go. I don't have to look yeah. around for a box, I could just go. And I was kidding, but you know, I'm 61. I've worked for like 500 media companies uh, and been surprised yeah. being let go as well. If you're starting your career or you're giving advice to someone who's starting their career, you know, we talk about the teamwork and the family of work, but the reality is you could be just a percent, right? A percent that was That's let go. Right. What mindset right. should people bring into their jobs about just to build a little bit of a, a protection in case they do end up being yeah. let go? You know what? I don't even know if I need to give a lot of advice to young adults because they got it right. They 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 are okay with switching jobs and they understand that loyalty go, only goes but so far. And a lot of times it's on the other side. We are very loyal to our companies and they're not so much loyal to us. And so, I mean, I, even as I talk to my young adult uh, students, like I have a daughter who's, you know, working in a situation and she's just not happy. She's like, mm, I might just look for another job next year. And she's OK with that. Now, I grew up in a different generation. My grandmother, when I can you believe this, when I got the job at The Washington Post and I was working at the Baltimore Evening Sun, she was not happy about that. She was like, are you sure? Because, you know, the sun has been good to you. And she, I mean, this was The Washington Post. And at that time, you know, who didn't want to work? Washington Post. And my grandmother was like, oh, no, you need to be loyal to them. And I, you know, I was like, no, I'm going to the Washington Post. But nowadays, I think this generation has it absolutely right. You know what? Do a good job for the company that you work for. Put in all of your all. Your, bring your A game. But manage your expectations that you are not um, sit around looking forward to, um, that you can be expendable mm -hmm. if things get tight. Um, and if you manage that expectation, it's not like it's going to make it any easier because it won't. But at least you go, you know what? I kind of expected that this is what happens in the business world. Um, and I, you know, even myself, people will say things like, oh, you've been at the post for 30 years. You, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about anything. Uh-uh. I act like almost every day I could get fired. And I don't, I'm not meaning that I act out of fear, but I just try to make sure I manage my money and I save and I make financial decisions as if I could lose my job tomorrow. Michelle, is it, that's that, that, that 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 absolutely. Is it still true that um, like if you get laid off today and to, to, to your point, to take action right away, don't just wait. Um, can you call your credit companies or your lenders? Can you still say, hey, I got laid off. Can I put a pause on this? Are there that absolutely. can you still do those sort of things? You most certainly can, and you should. And many people don't, and I understand. You're embarrassed. You're thinking, why should I call them? I don't have the money, or I'm not going to have the money. But those will be, should be the first calls that you make. Uh, if you don't have another job lined up, you call your mortgage company and say, I just got laid off. You see the news? I was one of those thousands that got laid off. Um, and then you could ask for forbearance, especially if you've been a good mortgage payer, um, and say, I need a couple of months or at least a month um, until until I figure some things out, call your credit card companies and ask them to put your payments on pause. Or if you've been rolling credit card debt, you can say, oh, listen, you can just go back and start paying the minimum payment. Um, in normal times, you wouldn't do that. But now it's desperate times. And the minimum payment on credit cards is so low. I mean, so that you could manage that 20 or $30 payment until you get back on your feet. That's the other thing. Keep your cash. So maybe you were trying to pay debt and you were aggressive with that. You're going to stop that because you're going to need that cash to carry you through until you can get um, another job. Dan, just to, to finish this off, as, as, as we look ahead, do you, do you think the layoffs are done in this sector? I know that, that there's a, that's always a temporary answer either way. But do you think over the next couple of quarters that they have, they have cleared out everything that they expect to in terms of cutting costs? Or is this something we should buckle up for for the rest of the year? Uh, I mean, I think for at least for the first half of the year, we should buckle up. There, there are plenty of big tech companies that haven't announced major layoffs yet, and, and they most likely will. 
All right, Michelle yeah. and Dan, thank you so much for joining me. I know, Michelle, we were going to lean into you on fi uh, money advice, but I think we took a different route, which I think was helpful. No, so. that's okay, because <laughs> you know what? A lot of mental stuff is related to your money. All right, Dan, and we appreciate your expertise on this as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it for tonight. I'm Sue O'Connell. Thanks for watching. Good night. have inspired